So we got ourselves here a Samsung S9 that was sent in by Justin in South Carolina. They said it got left in a pants pocket and then went into the clothes washing machine. After the wash cycle, it would no longer turn on and they need their pictures, videos, contacts, and text. So we gotta do some advanced diagnostics to track down the fault on this motherboard so we can get the customer's data recovered. And one of the first things I like to do, plug in the USB meter, and we are getting five volts and 90 something milliamp draw. So you can see here, 0.094-ish. That is not good. It should be one or two amps. The next thing I like to do is open up the phone. Now this already came partially disassembled, and I'm gonna connect boot box to my power supply. So you can actually see it right here. It is set to 4.35 volts and 3.5 amps. It is now turned on. And then we're gonna plug in power supply directly to the battery connector. And how do we do that? We use a special boot cable. So with an adapter, I can plug in this mechanic boot box, which I will link down below in the video description. So now I can turn on and off the power from the power supply that's coming out of these leads. This allows me to remotely control the power. So I have one designed specifically for this model. This is a very common Samsung battery connector. This is the Galaxy S9, but it works on S8, S7, and some of the newer models, S10 and up. So I'm gonna plug this in. Currently it's off, it is plugged in. So when I push power here, it's gonna connect this battery connector to the power supply. And based on that reading, we're gonna know at least where to start with this diagnostic. I'm gonna push power. And we have a 47 milliamp draw before prompt to boot. That means before I even push power on the phone, think of it like a car engine when you crank the key on your car. This is just me putting gas in the gas tank. It is not turning the car on, so the gas should not be consumed. So in this case, there should be no current draw, but we have some. So that is a clue to the problem. One of the things about Samsung's is when you have a small draw like that, uh, it's typically a main short on a power rail. So this is a board view software. This tells us how all the board components are connected to each other, what lines are what, and this helps us diagnose and troubleshoot the problem. So this is the S9 board view for this uh, version of the board. And the first thing I like to check is around the Wi-Fi chip. This is where you'll find the main power rail called VPH power. This one is the most common, a short. So we're gonna check it for a short. So in diode mode, we're gonna measure it and we get 263. That is not a short, but doesn't mean there's not a problem. So next thing I do is check the battery connector as well, because this line could be shorted, although based on the power supply, I would assume it's not. 569, okay, so not shorted. That, that's the two main power rails I like to check. Now, the, they did mention they went through a wash cycle on their uh, washer. So now let's inspect the board for any water damage. The board overall looks pretty clean. So let's inspect under the sticker to see if we can spot some any, any corrosion. All right, I'm gonna take out this little uh, thermal pad and let's inspect under here. This is a very common spot to find corrosion. So this is the charging IC. It's connected to uh, the main power rail and to the battery connector, which are the two lines that short. And they short because that is where all the electricity is flowing at all times. And electricity plus uh, water is not a good thing. So next, let's remove the shield. Now keep in mind, this is a CPU here. If you overheat that, you're gonna cause a lot of problems uh, if you're gonna try this yourself. So make sure you take this to a, to a professional because there's a lot of rookies out there who uh, end up overheating the CPU trying to get to this area and then you end up with uh, requiring a CPU swap. All right, so I've ended up removing all the shields to check underneath them for all the water damage. So far, I found no obvious corrosion anywhere. So all the shields have been removed on both sides. And unfortunately, I did record it, but my microphone died and I just realized it. So, um, but anyways, that part is not too important. The important thing is that uh, we have looked everywhere and we do not have any obvious corrosion. This is the PMIC. This is the main power chip. This powers all the all the circuits on the board. 
This one's for display, I think. Oh no, this one, I uh, believe this one's wireless charging. I don't know. But uh, those are the, some common chips that uh, could have water damage on them. They don't have it. This is a charging IC. Uh, there's no obvious water damage on it either. This is like uh, by the charging port connector. I've seen a lot of water damage here before in the past and it's all clean. So what I do from this point is we're gonna use these multimeter probes that are connected to my power supply. You can see we're at 4.3 volts and when I touch them together, we get almost three amps. That means we have live voltage here on these probes. Now we have my Seek Compact Pro thermal camera setup, which I will link down below as well. What we're gonna do is inject voltage into the VPH power rail, which is uh, the main power rail for the phone because we do have 40 milliamp draw before prompt to boot. That typically means there's a short on VPH power. In this case, it doesn't read as a full short. So let's inject power into that line to see if we get um, any abnormal current draw. And sure enough, we get about 360 milliamp draw when going into VPH power. That should be zero. So this is what the tricky part is with water damage is water damage can go into sneak its way into who knows where and sometimes it doesn't even create a full short you have a partial short which makes it even harder to find so right now what i'm going to do is just keep injecting into that line have that short draw current and that's going to generate heat and when it does that it's going to allow us allow us to see where that current is flowing so i'm going to inject into the same power rail at a different spot and look at that we can see you can see this chip is heating up, but if you look closely, there's heat here as well. Look at that, there's two chips heating up. So let's take a closer look to that. So this is the charging I see. Uh, the battery can, oh, uh, look at that. Actually, I see some green stuff there. So that's a good sign in that it's gonna help us find the fault. But, so is this chip here that's heating up and this one here? So what I'm gonna do is, let's remove this one first because we're connecting, we're injecting into VPH power, which I was uh, injecting here, and that's shooting the voltage into this chip, but it's making its way here as well. This one's not connected to VPH power. Take a look at this. So this is the charging I see here. We can see heat in this corner of the chip. Oh, actually it does have a line here. So this is a small little chip. Uh, I don't know what it does, but I do know we don't even need this chip installed to get data. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, this chip is way easier to pull and just leave off. And if that solves it, great. If it doesn't, then we'll focus on this one next. All right, let's go ahead and, before I do that, what I like to do is, well, I do know, cause I've done this many times, this chip is definitely not needed for data. I'm just gonna mark it just in case. So I'll mark a little X there and see if our friend Justin is gonna have some good news. Now this is the UFS chip. Let's cover it up so we don't overheat it. Now it's really a tight spot there. So it might be hard to grab the chip, but I think I got a good angle. Oh, look at that. I think I found uh, one of the culprits. That is some pretty nasty corrosion there. And this is what happens with uh, water damage. So this is why I don't offer repairs on water damage because you can have this type of corrosion under many different places. And unless you can pull every chip and inspect underneath, you're not gonna have a reliable device. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get rid of this chip. I'm gonna clean this up clear those bridges so that corrosion creates a bridge between the different circuits and that will, will create a problem creates a short short is uh short for short circuit so we're essentially that corrosion is shorting or bridging between two lines that should not be touching so now that i've kind of scrubbed it and just kind of poked all that gunk out of the way. Let's see if we still have a short there. Okay, so I'm gonna do the exact same thing. If we, we sh I should expect way lower current draw when injecting. So I'm gonna touch the line. And look at that, zero current draw. 
I'm touching the line, nothing being drawn. All right, I swapped out my multimeter pros back to my boot box. Uh, I have my boot cable. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna turn this off so we don't see. We're gonna leave it as a surprise. All right, so I have it plugged in. Before we're getting 40 milliamp draw before prompt to boot, now we have zero. That's exactly what we wanna see. We wanna see zero current draw before prompt to boot. So we have voltage flowing, lights on, voltage flowing to the board and no current draw. That is good news. Next step is to prompt to boot. That means we have to push the power button on the phone to trigger the phone to wanna to boot up. Now in this case, here's the power button. And if you look at where, uh, look at the design, there's like this little cable and two contact points. So we find those corresponding pins here. Uh, they're up here. If I touch these together with metal, tw metal tweezers. Uh, look at that, we get some current draw here on the side. That looks like normal current draw. Uh, another thing you can do, I just throw it back into the housing. I hate these little antenna cables. All right, let's plug in the screen. All right, let's do this. So I'm connected, I'm gonna push the power button, take a look at the current draw. It's gonna do a very specific behavior. So 190, 300, look at that, Guy S9. This thing is booting up and looks like we'll have a successful data recovery. Just give it a second to boot up and see if we can get the data. Look at that, the phone booted up. Now, do we have touch? We do, look at that. Now, how to get the data out of this? I have a very special program, which I will link down below. It is only, uh, I think like $40 or so but it's amazing. I use it for almost all my data recovery jobs. Uh, it works great for pretty much all Android phones. What you gotta do is first go to settings. Oh, look at that. They already have developer uh, options enabled. All right, so you have to look up how to enable developer options, but you go down here, enable USB debugging, click okay, plug this in. And then we get our favorite program, Coolmuster. This is a data recovery program that allows us to pull all the pictures, videos, contacts, text. Now the phone is telling me allow USB debugging, always allow, allow, allow. And the nice thing about this software is also a one-time fee. Unlike a lot of iPhone backup softwares uh, that charges you like, you know, a license per five devices. This one's one-time lifetime license. Uh, I think you can install it on two computers before you have to buy a new license, but as long as you use the same computer, it should work. Now I am on a new PC, so I have to go through the driver installation process. Uh, so let's go through that. So just next through all that stuff. And there we have it, we're in. So it only takes like about a minute or two for it to connect and, and get ready. But once we're in, you can see, we can see all the contacts text, photos. So when you're doing photos, if you click on library, you'll get everything. If you only click on camera, you'll only get the main camera roll uh, folder, which is not a good idea because a lot of people will organize their photos into different albums and it might not have everything there. So just click library and then select all. But yeah, you select all and then you click export and you'll be able to export all the video, all the pictures. For videos, it's all just one giant folder, export that. SMS allows you to export in multiple formats. Uh, so I just go uh, each category one by one to export into different formats, put it onto a USB drive, and then we're done. Data's recovered, and I keep one copy on my end. I ship the USB with the phone back to the customer, and then, uh, and yeah, and then once the customer confirms you got the data, everything's good. I delete my copy and then case closed. So if you guys need your data recovered, send me a message. I have my website right there at the bottom of the screen. If you guys need this as a B2B service, I do offer discounted prices for uh, verified repair shops. Uh, if you wanna support the channel, you like these type of videos, make sure you guys are liking the video, subscribing, commenting down below, checking out all the links in the video description because I have all the tools from today's videos uh, list there and some other cool stuff like some repair related uh, t-shirts. So uh, thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.